So without further ado, um, we'll begin the debate. Just a briefing. She's been a Royal Debate Championship and uh, uh, Grand Finalist in 2014 and 15. She was uh, with me in the United Asian Debate Championship semifinal. So just let me briefly introduce the debaters um, that we have before us. Um, on my right, we have Jasmine Ho, who was also a third year law student. Um, towards male. So there will be three areas of this debate. Firstly, I will tell you what is the purpose of higher education and why higher education is meant for equitable ed education. Secondly, I'll tell you how our policy will get to change the behavioral and create more educated men. And thirdly, what will tell you why an educated male population is a prerequisite to the equality between genders. Yeah. Firstly, <laughs> within the role of public universities or role of public institutions in general is meant to be public good. That means that it's meant to address not the needs of our economy or our corporation, but it's necessarily meant to achieve public good and in order to create equality and equitable education. That means that we need to allow access for both genders equally. So if you realize that there's a problem, and that's one of the gender is disproportionately disadvantaged by this system, that means that this system must be changed. No, thank you. Secondly, how do you get men more educated? We think that tertiary education and or higher education is incredibly important to change behaviors and change the way we react to our education policy and the way we react to society. Because higher education is more important than we think. It's not just a degree and not just uh, a few things that you learn at school. It cultivates the need for you to educate yourself, to think critically, to create a structure, and more importantly, some clarifications in life for more students. So we think that despite some students achieving less, them being able to participate and join a higher education means that they're able to change their behavior and necessarily be a more integrated, integrated part of society and be able to be a better citizen as a whole. And we think a male population will be able to greatly benefit from that. Um, any questions? Given that resources are limited and spots are limited, do you concede that this quota comes at the expense of other minority groups also entering university? We concede. However, we think that in particular, this policy is very important in order to ensure that we are able to get similarly educated, uh, educated individuals across genders and in order to achieve equality. And thirdly, why this is particularly important? Why is it so important that we get the male of that population educated? Because we think education is very, very important, and it's the pinnacle in what creates the understanding of what is substantive equality between the genders. So if we'd like to tell everybody that equality between the genders are extremely important, we're missing a huge step by not educating a huge or half the population. Understanding that higher education, the ability to think critically, the ability to participate in a lot of very, very important discussions means that the male population will be able to engage in what it means, uh, what equality means across, across the board, in what it means to respect women, why respecting women is so important, why is it that the law should be catered to respecting women as well as respecting men equally. Most of this substantive critical thinking are things that you cannot get other than in education platform, other than in higher institutions. So we think higher institutions are the best platform in which we are able to achieve that. And we, if we systematically exclude a large amount of male population Jasmine. from accessing higher education, that necessarily means that we exclude a large amount of individuals from educating themselves about the importance of respecting the other gender. Then we can never achieve substantive equality as well as formal equality if half the population disagrees with what equality is and do not necessarily understand what equality is. We believe, if you believe, that women should be treated equally with dignity and respect, we believe that we should educate the men equally on what that, that means. This policy is also extremely important because it's not a singular case. It's not about whether that man gets educated or whether that person gets educated. This is a systematic policy to ensure that generations of men will not be left out in the system. If you don't allow this policy to pass, you're not letting this one boy not get education. You're letting an entire generation of men be systematically discriminated from getting education across the board. You create a system that perpetuates the lack of higher education and make it exclusive to only certain individuals and not make it equitable across the genders. So we think that at the end of the day, if you have to create more educated society, 
a more, edu more educated families, more educated society, you need to understand that the only way to achieve both formal and substantive equality is to educate our population equally across both genders. Because of that, UT Mara urges you to propose. It is true that a lot of development is contingent upon education. But when the policy of your education comes at the expense of taking away the opportunity to get education from other minority groups, this is where I draw the line and tell you this policy is not worth fighting for. Given the fact that resources are limited, given the fact that there are only so many students which public universities can commit to, we think this quota comes at the expense of other quotas that would involve aborigines, that would involve the disabled, that would involve the poor, that would also involve women. We think currently, given the fact that men usually are in a position of advantage, we don't think that it's necessary that we forward them this quota. In my speech, I'll be talking about two things. Number one, when exactly do we implement quotas? Because I think this was something that Prime Minister missed out on. And secondly, why this particular policy is harmful. Most, um, my responses towards her case will be included in these questions. So first off, when do we implement quotas? We think that quotas aren't just given out of the fact that we think education is important, therefore we give quotas. It's also about understanding who currently has less of an access towards education. When do we implement quotas? It's firstly to correct past injustices towards the opportunities of education that have affected our ability to choose and our ability to access that opportunity. That's why we give quotas to the disabled. That's why in certain countries we give um, the, the quotas to like African Americans, the Aborigines, and if it's gender, it's probably to women. Men are placed at a higher pedestal. Men usually have the support of their families. That's why it's very unfortunate when you see families that get disappointed when their firstborn is a female rather than a male. And then you see like how usually they end up like, sorry. So like even when you have men in the picture, the fact that they generally get more access to education, their families are more willing to pay more because they feel that your job is to go out and be the breadwinner in comparison to some families that think that the job of a woman is to stay home and be a baby making machine. We don't think that's necessarily true. Or even if a woman was given the opportunity go, to go ahead and endure herself in higher education, it's limited. They tell you, don't be an engineer, don't be an astronaut, choose something more feminine, be a teacher, be a doctor. We think that these are certain um, stereotypes that exist towards women proving to you that men currently have more of an advantage when it comes to accessing education. So the question then becomes, why are there less men in the public universities? We think it's because of the choice that they necessarily make for themselves, despite knowing the fact that they have these advantages and these opportunities. So we don't think that it is our burden to bear the cost of the choice of men who already acknowledge the advantages that they have for us to further sacrifice other individuals who don't have the opportunity or the luxury choice that men usually do. I promise you I'm not man-hating, right? It's just a general fact that usually men have more of an access towards this opportunity given the fact that society does include a lot of individuals who unfortunately don't understand the importance of why women should be treated equally. No. Your quota comes at the expense of other quotas as well. Given that, we think that it's more important that we focus on the quotas for these women and for the minority groups because they don't have the support. They have like societal perception up against their odds where they are told family is more important than education or even if education is something for you, it's generally just limited, right? We think that even if women don't materialize or other of these minority groups don't materialize their university degree into jobs, we think that it's important we still give them these quotas so that we don't focus on these quotas, so that they have an option in the future, that they have a safety net to fall back on, <coughs> that it gives you a higher purpose, that your purpose of like going into a doctor isn't just about your family. It's giving them the sense of respect that usually other individuals aren't willing to give them. Your policy actually makes it more, like creates a more sexist environment. And I'll tell you why after this question. Ma'am, most of the advantages that you talk about, all the things that men have, are created by society and perpetuated by that. How do you change that if you refuse to educate men about the differences, we, about equality and why there are no differences between genders? Okay, I think mean, first off, you can educate um, about gender equality without giving this quota. It, like, it makes no sense at all, right, for you to say, how do we make men understand that they're not entitled to advantages and opportunities? But how do you say, let's just give it to them, right? Let's just hand these quotas and tell them, even if you have less of an incentive to go to universities, or even if you make the ultimate choice to not go to university despite the advantages that you have, we're still going to give you a quota, right? Like, I think this entrenches this sexist notion. Because if anything, 
What this does and why this is harmful is because it creates a self-entitled environment for these men. That even if you don't have hope, and even if you are disincentivized, and even if it comes at the expense of other minority groups who currently have less of access towards these opportunities, we're still willing to make that sacrifice for you. Because we think that development cannot happen without you. When in truth, ladies and gentlemen, even when currently men already have the exposure in the working force, whether it's in hard labor or even in the service industry, and they still interact with women, yet we still see some sexist men existing. We don't think the conclusion or the solution to the situation is for us to translate into making more quotas to take away more educational opportunities for women, because part of the way in which we fight sexism is also to give opportunities to women to tell individuals that other minority groups can be as good at education as men. Thank you.